Hi guys, and welcome to Serology, a weekly conversation amongst friends regarding what's currently on the small and sometimes big screen and what might have trended in the past with me, Lady Alexa, a self-proclaimed TV addict, dreamer, and sucker for romantic shows, and my charismatic, yet sarcastic, co-host Rich the Hot Broccoli, also a TV addict, cat lover, and monster sculptor. Hello, Siri lovers, and welcome to another month of Seriology. We are on November now. November, guys. It is when men don't shave for charity awareness, and everybody starts making their plans to do all the holiday stuff. I love, and on top of that, the countdown to Christmas from Hallmark already started. Oh, so geez. I've been fully on Christmas romantic movies. Speaking of, speaking of the Hallmark days. stuff. Um, I've been trying to convince my mom to come on because she loves Christmas and Hallmark. So oh, I'm trying to convince awesome. her to just to come on and talk about uh, how like Chris, what Christmas means to her, and it's like maybe, kind of an amazing thing. Maybe we can do it in uh, in December when my mom yes. comes, and we can Ooh, have that'll be your like mom the moms. And my mom. That would be that, fantastic. That would be so funny. Yes, moms, are you that. listening right now? We're scheduling you to be on Seriology. Yeah, Merida. Start preparing uh. your voice. Drink some cough <laughs> syrup to be ready. <laughs> but, you know, today is going to be a fun episode. First is, this is the first episode we've done just the two of us without any guests. In a long time. Yeah, for like a whole month. Uh, month October was such a fun month that I think that now we are in November. We should have like a, a title for November. What do you think? Uh, I haven't thought of anything, but it's very family oriented. I agree. For me, I agree. Mm, Fam Vember sounds ridiculous. <laughs> I think we should just go with the Movember and you grow your mustache. I am not growing out my mustache. That would look ridiculous. <laughs> I'd look like a walrus. <laughs> but, guys, today we are going back to the 90s and 80s. Yeah, for the TGIF lineup. It's Friday night, and the mood is right. We're going to have some fun, show you how it's done, TGIF. Hello. I'm and before people mm. say that we're licensing something, we just wanted to put, that's a YouTube video that we got. And Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah we're not going to get sued. <laughs> Hopefully, don't get sued. Fingers crossed. <laughs> But we're going back to TGIF, and by the way, I was a baby when this lineup happened. There are some shows that I wasn't even born, but I watched all of them. You I'm... watched Perfect Strangers. Which one? Perfect Strangers. No, that one, no. I, I, okay, so let me recap. I've watched most of them. <laughs> okay, because that seen... one is a stretch. That had Bronson yeah. Pinchu as uh, Balky Botakabus. I've seen a big chunk of them. I'm a big fan of the TGIF lineup. I thought that was a golden time for TV sitcoms. Uh, also, um, from when me being a kid, it was such a family get around the TV time was the TGIF. Yeah, you're going to be here the one that brings up more because, as I said, I've catch reruns of all of the shows. And I've become a big fan of them, especially shows like Boy Meets World, Full House, and Clueless and Sister Sisters. Those are shows that I feel like, and Sabrina the Teenage Witch, that I grew up watching. These but, are all after my time. Yeah. The ones and you just these mentioned. are after, no, this were like when I was a baby, so I was not watching TV. I didn't understand anything. However, I catch the reruns afterwards, and they have become such an important part of my childhood. Um, some of these you have on the list. I don't. They don't. I don't remember them being any on Friday nights. Which ones? Like Friends and um, Frasier and Fresh Prince. I thought that was like a Tuesday night for Fresh Prince or Monday. Those started happening after the TGI however they were part of the 90s but non part of the TGIF lineup so we're we're doing TGIF yes and okay. we can make a little reference i mean i do believe that friends deserves its own episode yeah we're not let's 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 pull, not talk about friends tonight cuz that that deserves its own i agree with you 
Um, what, what is your memory of TGIF in Venezuela? I feel like the, the first it has to be Family Matters. My aunt, I feel like my whole family was obsessed with Family Matters. With that Uncle. was the one? Yes, thank you. And it, I remember just... <laughs> you Have know you that seen he seen him them. now? He's, the, yes. He's ripped. But wait a second, even in the show, he used to drink like a potion or I don't I don't remember what he did that he used to like change from the Urkel character who is the very dorky to like the very cute guy who was... Was that later in the seasons? Because I don't remember that in the beginning. Yeah, I do remember that because... And they used to joke and guys, you can catch... Uh, you can fact check me, please. But I remember that when he was the dork side, he used to have the dorky girlfriend. But whenever he will drink the the potion or whatever, one of the popular girls from the show will be his girlfriend because she was like, oh, my God, you're so cute. What the hell are you doing? Do you think it was just booze? Well, he had a little liquid like courage. I, I do not remember what he did. This one I did see back in the 90s. So I used to watch it whenever I will stay at my grandfather's house with my aunt and grandma. So I do not remember that much about it. I just, I do remember my aunt being like, oh my God, Family Matters is on. Let's hold it down. It was a good down. show. Shut I, I watched it quite watch a it. bit. Uh, he had a cool car when he learned to drive that opened, the whole front opened up. And even like his suspenders, his suspenders. Yeah. <laughs> that, that little motion with the suspenders were and the, so Did fun. I do that? Yes. <laughs> Catch <laughs> <the> laugh. <laughs> How was that for you? Uh, I really, I think I caught the bulk of the seasons when it came on syndication after yeah. like around six o'clock. I don't remember okay. sitting at home and watching it because... On I Friday the, night. Yeah, on Friday nights, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, same year. So we're doing a TGIF lineup. However, we did not live, like we did not sit down and watch the TGIF lineup. <laughs> but if we go Full House, I think Full House is one of the most... That's, I think, the most significant. I think that popularized TGIF. Yeah, I, I, I watch it in syndication back in Venezuela. So this is like <laughs> a long time afterwards. Um, and Full House is one of those shows that I rewatched the whole series last year. Really, the whole thing? The whole thing, because it's such a feel-good show. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I kind of relate to the Joey character on that show. <laughs> <laughs> not Uncle Jesse? <laughs> yeah, not Uncle Jesse at all. <laughs> no, that was it's the such weird a... 90s Fonzie was Uncle Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> There's something about Full House that, you know, I love DJ. I thought DJ was so cool. And, you know, how rude. Those those cat, those phrases, even though that that's... Stephanie, not DJ, but all those phrases like No Way Jose from the little Olsen twins. That that show was such a an important and beautiful show to just sit down and chill. It's funny how you say from the Olsen twins, but they had to be twins to play one character. I for the longest of time I did not know that they were twins. And then I find out that they are twins because I was a big fan of their movies. So when their movies case start coming up, like the Passport to Paris, One in Rome, and that type of movies, I was like, oh my God, they're twins. This is so cool. And I remember my dad saying, yeah, they were cute when they were babies, but they are horrible right now. Oh, yeah, they are. Do you know why they had to do that? Because the of their twins... teeth. Their teeth were... No. Wait no. A the, the... Do you know why they had to use twins to just play the baby role on Full House? Oh, because they get tired and they're babies and it's uh Ill, like they a baby is only allowed a certain amount, amount of screen of hours. time yeah on, yeah in front of the camera so, so you they, need twins and, yeah. and they do that all the time like for many kid, for shows kids roles. yeah many shows that have babies it's twins they need twins and then they and grow up awesome. to be fashion moguls that's only them <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the, the, there's, I forgot, it's Elizabeth James. I think it's their brand. It's freaking incredible and crazy expensive. But then again, with the, on the, re, on the sequel, which is Fuller House, 
they're so, they make fun of them not make fun of them but they are always trying to bring them and i and i think it's such a cute way of them uh, trying to bring them on so they and haven't been on the show they have not been on the show that's a little arrogant don't you think uh very yes i mean it was the show <laughs> that made them yes and they won't even make an appearance it's not a little it's very and i do know for a fact because i've seen all the interviews that he said no because i know him i wish but john who's Stamos, him uh, Stamos. john Stamos okay. has begged them to at least one little second for the show and they have repeatedly said no they're like you know how important we are and also i don't think that they're acting at all i think they left thank acting god, behind. Thank god. <laughs> i did like their movies as i said you were but, at the right age when those movies came out yes yes those movies were for my demographic i but... felt like they were the hallmark <laughs> for teen movies yeah, and now I'm obsessed with Hallmark, so you can see how oh, this look how, goes. <laughs> look how look how well you've aged. Yes, right. <laughs> Soon the Martha Stewart magazine subscription is going to start heading at your doorstep. Oh, shut up! <laughs> but there's another one. Full House. I feel like I I caught it at a l later stage in my in my life. But Boy Meets World. This one I feel like has been an such a strong point in your life between this and the reboot show i i swear to you this show just changed my life until this day i watch it i i love cory sean i don't and remember I, like i remember the characters i don't remember a thing about the show outside of the principal he's had a mustache mr and he, feeny oh my god yes mr. Feeny. and he would just like intervene every once in a while he was like their the, neighbor ah uh, okay like, the, like have... I was going to say, like the uh, the neighbor behind the fence in Tool Time. Yes, That's what I exactly. felt like, the same style exactly. of character. And there's there's Eric, which is the older brother. He used to scream at him, and it's one of those screams that are super famous, which is a, Finny! Finny! Mm. He was the one that got in trouble constantly. No, I'm thinking of a, uh, Malcolm in the Middle. Never mind. You know, never I've mind. never seen that show, by the way. That was a good show, Malcolm in the Middle. But we back back to the TGIF. Back to Friday. <laughs> so have you ever, so you've never seen a Boy Meets World? No, I used episode. to watch it. I just don't remember any of it. It's been so long. Oh my like, God. Th that's the only thing I remember are those, those characters, what they look like, and the principal. I don't remember what the dad looked like, what any of the shows were about. Oh God. If you want to talk about a feel good show boy meets world has to be at the top i mean it's a family and it's the friends and how you know all the all that intertwining of the stories it's just such a beautiful story to the point that they got a full-on sequel based on the daughter of shaw of cory i'm sorry uh boy meets world to you is wonder years to me i think so yeah <laughs> um Try to think back, and I'm pretty sure I'm wrong. This could have been the Saturday night shows. But Golden Girls? I am not sure. Also, for those of you who do not know what the TGIF is, because I think that we delve Yeah, we should into give it. them a little instead of just saying a bunch of letters. Yes. So the TGIF is, thank God it's Friday, is the name of an American Prime Time programming blog that aired on ABC from... Uh, the late 1980s to basically 1999 it was through the whole 90s at the time there was a war between the you know the networks. Com the tv company yeah the networks thank you and uh abc was basically the first one who was able to make popular a whole block tv not for people to just watch one show but to watch the whole lineup of shows yeah, the, the two hours worth of shows. Exactly. And that's how they did it with uh, Thank God. Th uh, actually, it's not Thank God It's Friday. It's Thank Goodness It's Funny. I did not know that. Yes. So they say. That makes name, it dumber. Yeah. The name comes from the initials of the popular phrase Thank God It's Friday. However, the starts of the lineup 
touted the initialism meaning, thank goodness it's funny, because most of the shows on that blog were sitcoms. And afterwards, it was like 2020, so what you wanted to watch was the sitcoms. Which and was... then uh, NBC Thursday Night came along and crushed yeah. TGIF. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the whole thing was to encourage the audience to watch the entire blog. It was a catchphrase for marketing yeah. that got people to watch TV. So it started which was very in, clever. It started in September 22, 1989. Up until 1999, which I Ten think years. is when, yeah, it kind of ended. Um, and it will, I'm like reading here from our notes, <laughs> it will start every Friday at 8 p.m. And to many people, it signify how that the weekend will begin. And for many people, and that's something that I wanted to ask you, if you, if that song brought you back to that time, because I was reading a lot of interviews and to many people who grew up with this blog, that song is like, bringing them back to the time of, oh, I just remember watch being in, in my house with my parents in front of a TV, ready to watch Full House or ready to watch Family Matters or Boy Meets World. See, I, I don't remember the theme song, but I do remember being home watching Full House. Okay. Yeah. So that's like the one show that takes you back. Yes, is Full House. Because like... I loved Perfect Strangers when it came out. I remember... What is that about? Uh, this foreigner from like a very Eastern Bloc country okay. comes to live with his cousin in New York. And it's more of the, hey, I am a foreign cousin. And it was really funny. And they both worked, at, <laughs> I think, at this antique shop for Mr. Twinkasetti. And uh, yeah. It was a it was a cool show from what I remember, and it was uh, cousin Larry was cousin Larry was the the American cousin, and it was very eighties and very perfect for its time. Oh wow! Yeah, you know I feel like nowadays it's so there have been so many shows have tried to get that family sitcom feeling of the shows that did so well in the nineties. And very few have been able to succeed. Why can't we do that anymore? I do Why not can't know. we? It is so weird. We can't have a nice family sitcom. Like, everybody wants to just watch crappy reality TV now, and that's it. I mean, I think And not have any morals at all. CB CBS and ABC have been the ones who've done it the best. I mean, ABC has the whole ish franchise which is blackish mixedish and uh, cronish and blackish was the one that kicked it off blackish has six seasons already and then you have modern family abc i think it's the one that has done it the best but do you think it has but... the popularity those family sitcoms have the popularity that they used to have back in the 80s and 90s because i don't feel that way anymore i, I do don't not, hear I do not think people so, no. talk about these shows at all all i hear is did you see the kardashians blah 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 and then i to walk the away that, from whatever conversation is about to start to the point that the sequels girl meets world and fuller house the showrunners have said that they wanted to bring it back because they thought that the world needed that feel-good show again the and world it does the world does need won't. it the world won't accept it because they'd rather have a moralist, mindless show in front of them to watch now. Completely agree. I mean, Fuller House did really well in their first season, but afterwards it kind of went down to the point that we're going to get the last season in Christmas. Yeah. And Girl it's Meets World. Like, I, Girl... I won't watch Fuller House, but it's still a show that needs to be in rotation Around. where kids yeah. need to watch just to learn. To be a good person. I learned a lot from watching these shows to like be a decent that, person. Like, I know that my boss, um, one of my bosses, she and her husband decided to put Full House to their kids. And she tells me, Anna, my kids love the show. And whenever we sit down, like, Full House is on Hulu, I believe. Mm -hmm. And the fact that she sits down with her kids to watch Full Up. Uh, Full House on uh, Hulu. It's such an, a, a beautiful thing. That's and another thing that we don't have anymore is families sitting down together 
to watch oh, a show. To tell your kids agree. to put away your devices to watch this other device, which is kind of a little funny to me. But it <laughs> but was you're it was such a time. yes, exactly. You're talking. You're not just looking at your screen. Yeah, which is There's such no, an important thing. Like I four don't... individual screens going on with four different things happening. <laughs> at least everybody was watching one screen. I mean, you. I don't know. Does uh, the Big Bang Theory enters into a family sitcom? I don't even know what that is. So you've never seen the Big Bang Theory? Mm-mm. No. Oh, Big Bang, Big Bang Theory, Big Bang. What did Have you, you understand? Big Men. No. Like oh, come on. <laughs> come on, Venezuela. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the Big Men. How you rude. Know, Charles Big Men. <laughs> How rude of you. <laughs> I think it. Sh I think it does. It's a little more adult, but I it's think... also a smart show, and it teaches more like science concepts. I think young Sheldon is more of a family. That's sitcom. more of a family show. Yes, completely. But Big Bang Theory. <laughs> you just said Big Ben, and that's the clock in London. I'm gonna punch you. <laughs> I swear to you, I am gonna punch you. But Big Ben Theory is. I loved it. I remember hearing the name and being like, oh, that has to be boring because it sounded like, you know, some history thing and my dad made me watch it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I it was... I mean, it, it is genius. It's funny straight off yeah. the bat for the whole 30 minutes. But, but it's not a family. Yeah, it's, it's a little a more adult. Family. Yeah. I mean, when you talk about masturbation, it becomes no fa not a family. <laughs> you know, when your penis gets stuck in a robot fist, not family. And I think that's why... Boy, shows like Full House and Boy Meets World are still such influence, influential shows. And even Roseanne, yeah. if she didn't screw up her show, that was a huge family show. It was like the when it came out initially, it yeah, was the first was. to show that middle class. It was groundbreaking True. show. Like True. all other shows were like rich people <laughs> or well, Full House well was off. Not rich. What? Full House was not fully rich. Did you see the house they lived in? Okay, if you take away him, but the Joey and Uncle Jesse, I mean, Uncle Jesse for like the first three seasons works as a, as a truly, truly Nolan, uh, the guy that kills the, bugs. Yeah, exterminator. As an exterminator for like the three first seasons. Okay, but still, they still, it was still a nice immaculate house. Okay. Roseanne was like, most of America's house. <laughs> like, everything, like, it was such a, the way the kids were growing up and all the different personalities that were actually real and okay. um, how every, like, you were struggling for money and to pay the, you know, pay the bills. That was such a good portrayal of America at the time. And it was with, what's his name, Goodman? Yeah, John Goodman. He mm -hmm. is a legend. I'm sorry. And if uh, yeah. you guys haven't seen The Righteous Gemstones, you need to go to an HBO I still haven't seen it, it yet. Still haven't seen that yet. Yeah, I can't believe you haven't. That show is, like, fantastic. Anywho. All right, back to, back another, to Friday. Yeah, another so when you were a kid, yeah, When you were a kid, uh, when it became 8 o'clock in Venezuela, what happened there? Um, it depends. Because I feel like I have a lot of chunks of different time on TV. When I was really young, um, I did not watch that much English-based shows. I I used to watch hidden from my from my parents um, telenovelas. So, so it wasn't like a family TV night for you guys. In when I was when I was young, no, because my grandmother, may she rest in peace, and she was the one who introduced me to novellas and my dad was very angry with her for the longest of time because he did not want me to watch that. She, you shouldn't have been that watching that as a kid anyways. He, he was like, that, watching the novellas is, when you're young, it's like the equivalent of watching reality TV. It's not even so opera, it's like reality TV. It's like dumb for your brain. And my dad did not want me to watch that type of things. So I used to watch them hidden from him and my grandmother was the one who got me into it because she used to love like it was a thing that she will get you have telenovelas in venezuela in two different blocks from 1 p.m till 3 p.m and from 8 p.m till 10 p.m and my grandmother will stop everything to watch those two blocks of tv so 
she used to she used to make lunch at 12 on the dot like if you didn't get home at 12 you had to eat by yourself because by one she needed to be in front of her tv but that that's still a soap opera mentality <laughs> though yes <laughs> so i got i got to learn what telenovelas were because of her and then later in life when my dad got me my own tv i got into the English TV based and older in life, I mean, seven, eight, you know, eight, nine. Let's go into eight, nine. And that's when I started watching Full House, Boy Meets World, because we got TV and Boy Meets World was the reruns were on Disney Channel. So that's where I caught mm. my Boy Meets World. So weird and everything. Uh, help me make this connection here. Did. I know Disney bought ABC. Was that part of the collection or did Boy Meets World be, was a ABC Disney production? That I will have to fact check it for you. When ABC was bought, did they, did Disney own all of the properties? I guess they did. It was probably why Boy Meets World was on Disney in syndication, but I feel like it was a Disney ABC production. Oh, look. Boy Meets World was originally aired on Disney-owned ABC and there released we go. Okay. between September 1993 to May 2000. Most episodes also made their way to Disney Channel, with Disney opting for more controversial episodes to not, to not be aired on Disney. That, that makes sense. Uh, so, Miss yeah. Henny with Mr. Cooper, did you watch that? I didn't watch it. I did not. I wrote, I wrote it on her, on her notes yeah. because I thought that you might have. <laughs> no, I, I didn't. Um, it had a l long run, that show. Oh, wow. If I remember. Yeah, a good couple and what, seasons. What, what, what is it about? I have no clue. Never watched it. I think it was um, some comedian, like, you know, how Seinfeld got a show. But I think he was a principal at a school. No clue. Okay, so or, according, uh, to according to Wikipedia, according to Wikipedia, Former NBA player Mark Cooper becomes a dedicated teacher and basketball coach in Oakland after his playing career ends. When he's not dealing with his students and players, Mark spends time with his gorgeous female roommate, who he eventually starts dating, and other friends. And yeah, it ran for Anywho. a long time. Anywho, yeah, like a, a lot of seasons, right? Yeah. And I feel and... like you watched Clueless. Oh, hell to the yes. Yeah. Not, I figured you did. And and funny enough, I didn't I saw the movie later in life. You know that was a modern version of a Jane Austen story, right? The clueless the movie? Really? Yes, it was. Oh my god, I did not know that. Yeah. How much better do you feel about the movie? Love how much more do you because, like the movie now? Okay, let me say something. I don't know if you know this, but Jane Austen is like my favorite. That's why I'm of saying that. Time. The audience knows you bring that up all the time. The audience knows. That's why I'm bringing it up. All it was right. a we, modern we interpretation of a Jane Austen before. book. Yeah. Well, that is incredible. You know, mm -hmm. I, hey, Twilight is the first book of Twilight is ba is like a modern vampire version of Pride and Prejudice. Yeah, but that was a stupid movie. But back to Clueless. <laughs> Clueless. So I didn't see the movie. The movie was not the first encounter I had with Clueless. I had The TV show was my first encounter with Clueless. And I remember when I was a little girl just wanting Cher's automatic closet. That closet oh. for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen the show. <laughs> I never saw the show, but I remember she took... In the, in the movie, she took pictures of herself. No, and her closet, her closet was automatic, so she had like a little button, and mm -hmm. the clothes would like go to do, 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 like a mm. laundry mat. Oh, nice thing. Rich people. And yeah, Cher was freaking rich, <laughs> but I I just remember wanting that so bad and wanting to live in that house. I wanted the clueless life. As oh, girls, if... oh girls in their closets. <laughs> As if, but yes. <laughs> So did you get to see Clueless? I don't think it's a show. I love the movie. Never watched the show. That's not a... That was yeah. one, I think I was in my 20s, and two, not my style of show. The The movie is fantastic. I saw it yes. now. I, I saw it, and I'm like, okay, yeah, this is great. And a lot of people talk 
they say that Alicia Alicia Silverstone's choice of not doing the TV show because she didn't feel like it was the right track for her career because most of the actors from the movie went on to do the show except for her which is sad because uh, her career really didn't go anywhere much after that that's what people say that even Elmo like what's where is she now is she on the where are they are now files Yeah, no, um, I mean, she became a little more famous nowadays, but at the time, it, it's crazy to think that most of Brittany, Brittany Murphy, I mean, she became crazy famous. Donald Faison, Donald Faison, I think it's the one that did really well, because, I mean, he did the movie, then he went on to do the TV show, and then he goes into Scrubs. I mean, yeah, that guy did so good He on his so career. He was so good on Scrubs. Well, Scrubs is one of my favorite shows. I don't know if you know that. But oh, yeah. That I did not know that. one of my favorite shows. I think I've watched every episode a ton of times. <laughs> I thought it was so brilliant. But we're not talking about Scrubs. All right. <laughs> back, to, back, to, back to Friday. What I think also it's crazy is that Paul Rod came out of that movie. Who? Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd did. Yes. yes. He was the brother in the movie. The stepbrother. Yeah. <laughs> he was in he was in Clueless. I mean, I that's crazy. I forgot about that. Yeah, totally forgot about that. That's insane. <laughs> But step by step, I feel like you should have caught that one. I remember the theme song, never watched the show. <laughs> the, the theme song with them in the, in the roller coaster? Yeah. My thing with my thing with step by step is that I don't know why I always saw it as a bad version of Full House. Okay. So I never got into step by step, but I know people that freaking love the show, but to me it was like because it was Full House and then step by step. So I always was pissed whenever step by step will become well what was start step by step up. about? Um a family living Okay. In, I think, Atlanta? I'm not sure. As I said, I used to get angry all the time because step-by-step step meant full house ended. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing you remember of step-by-step. Step. Yes. <laughs> But it's with this woman. What's her name? Uh, the one that is trying to make everybody young nowadays. Uh, oh, my God. This is going to kill me What? until I read her name. What's her name? The blonde woman. Suzanne Somers. Oh, how? That had, that she was in that? Oh, yeah, she was the mom. The thigh master? She was the mom. Hmm. Awkward. And you okay. know, she has like a bunch of books right now saying all the things that women need to eat and drink to mm. keep being young. Yeah, she had the thigh master. And the book, the, the, thigh, the thigh master was in the 90s. Nowadays, she has the freaking book. Does she Or use she, the book as the thigh master? No, she has okay. people drinking, I don't know how many, hormones. No. To keep Sounds a cold young Sounds like a diet buddy. <laughs> so by That's the way, I, it was not in Atlanta. Uh, and the show, the family is, was based on Port Washington, Wisconsin. The not only reason close. why I thought it was Atlanta is because of the... I, for the longest of time, I thought that... Okay, so the beginning of the show, it's them in a, in a park, in an amusement park. Yeah, and it goes over the roller coaster, and then the yes. song kind of kicks in. And for the longest of time, I thought that amusement park was Sex, sex Flags. Ah, that makes over sense. Over Georgia, over Georgia. But yeah, that was why hmm. I thought maybe Atlanta. Now, dinosaurs. Dinosaurs, I think it's one that, yeah, you were a little older, but you had to have seen. I do, and it was the <laughs> Roseanne slash Flintstones with um, puppets. Was it puppets? Or I th I think either it puppets or those... costumes. I think it was costumes. Costumes. I, like, I thought the, the costumes, I was in college when this came out. Uh, I just remember the baby. I, the baby. <laughs> he was so you cute. You know, the, the father had the, the flannel shirt on because yes. he was a blue-collar worker and the helmet and, or the hard hat. And 
It's really our, what I remember about it, but I remember watching it. I, that show was so funny. Uh, and it, and it, beca- it, it it was crazy because I remember the, the beginning song was like, boom, boom, boom. You know, all those really harsh sounds that you would not associate with a sitcom. Mm. But that those were the songs to, to begin the show. And then you have this really cute sitcom with the baby always crying and popping out of an egg and the girl being all girly and the brother being all, you know, I am cool and I have the a mohawk. The costumes were great. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I totally forgot about that character. <laughs> it was it was like a married with children, but with dinosaurs. Yeah. Roseanne Flintstones. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Flintstone. Flintstone. <laughs> Flintstone. <laughs> but I also can't believe that Sabrina the Teenage, when I, when I read this, when I, when I was working with you creating this structure, and I read that Sabrina the Teenage Witch entered the TGIF lineup. I was in shock. I did was that not always, know did that. Did that move to TGIF? I feel like that was a Wednesday show for a long time. Or Okay, so the Sabrina the Teenage Witch originally kicked off on TGIF. However, okay. it later changed to the WB... And uh, it was one of the few shows that continued its success after moving out of ABC. Yeah, usually once a show moves, that's pretty much the end of the show. Yeah, and it was one, <laughs> it survived for three more seasons on the WB. Oh, good for them. Hey, and now there's the successful... Fun fact! <laughs> <laughs> now there's a six, successful darker version of Sabrina. Which we still haven't talked about, Rich. Yeah, what we did. I we talked to... about I... it on... But During very, Witches. very little... Very little. I need you to watch to finish watching that show so we can do a full on discussion. Okay. But there's another show of the TGIF lineup that later moved to another network, whatever. But it became from here, like it its origins are on the TGIF, which is Sister Sister. Uh, Sister Sister for me, yeah, the Mori twins, D and Tamara. I love that show. I freaking love that <laughs> show. <laughs> I started watching the reruns when we first got cable at my apartment. And it was DirecTV, I remember very clearly. And it was on Nickelodeon, on their young adult block, which was anim- Animorphs, which was the kids that transform into animals. So, uh, Clarissa, and then Sister Sister. And Sister Sister was so freaking awesome to me. And I still love the show. It's with her little um, neighbor that was a dork, but then when he grew up, he was very cool and handsome. And they were like, oh, Roger, and go home, Roger. That that line was such a, became so famous for them. Go home, mm-hmm. Roger. I don't, by your face, see your lovers, he's making a face like I have no effing clue what yeah, you're, I have what no you're talking clue. about. Yep, I'm guessing you did clue. not watch that show? Nope, at all. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Oh, holy lord. The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? Not, not a TGIF show. Not a TGIF, but I think that if we're talking 90s sitcoms, we need to talk of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Did you... When was the last time you watched the beginning, like the first season or two of Fresh Prince? Oh, in a long time. Okay, so Why? it was before Will Smith knew how to act. And on the <laughs> show, while other people are saying their lines, he's mouthing their lines. <laughs> yeah. I have not seen and that. It is I'm going to have to Super see obvious. That. Super obvious. I'm going to have to see that. But I mean, <laughs> yeah, the well, song, that song. Oh, well, because he. Uh, Fresh Prince of DJ Jazzy Jeff. That was that fun style, and yes. that song is taken from those that fun style of Fresh Prince. It's and weird that... that he was the Fresh Prince, and now he's just he's Will Smith. Like, what a transformation this guy has had over his life. He nobody ever thought that he was gonna. Actually, there's a really, really, really bad movie of Ben Affleck, where, and I think it was. 
where he has a little daughter and the wife the wife dies and he has that's to raise not the a daughter. bad movie jersey girl what yeah, are you jersey insane girl. woman that was a great movie wow guys i think i just hit a wow hey. that was a kevin <laughs> smith movie that is no way that was a bad movie the thing is that jersey girl happened right after jiggly jiggly whatever and that movie was so bad that I... That was a... That's the bad Ben Affleck movie. Jersey Girl was not... And Jersey Girl, Jennifer Lopez was also the wife that dies. Mm -hmm. So I associate that all together. But on Jersey Girl, he says that Will Smith is not going to be famous and his career went to hell That's right. There was a Will Smith scene in Jersey Girl. His whole career right. goes to hell because he says on air that Will Smith mm. is never going to be famous after The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Yeah, and uh, Liv Tyler was in that. That was a good movie. I don't know what's wrong with you. You go rewatch <laughs> that right after we're done recording and then apologize to me <laughs> and all the Siri lovers listening right now. I apologize, Siri yes. lovers. I mean, uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, you need to write a, a I'm sorry card to everyone listening right now. <laughs> Now, if we're again, if we're talking '90s, we need to talk "Safe by the Bell." Safe by the Bell. Safe. Oh, that. Uh, yep. Yeah. When I wake up in the morning, and na 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 na. Do we go? What's the geeky guy's name? Oh, uh, Screech. Screech. Do we go right to when the show ends and he makes a sex tape, or do we talk about the show? Uh, uh judging by your face right now, I feel like we should go right to the sex tape. I mean, that that guy. I think that he ran out of money and he just didn't yes. know what, what the do. hell to do with his life. So he so does a let's sex make tape. A tape, a sex tape. And the sex and tape who was wants a... to see that? Ugh. And I think that it was Saved by the Smell or something, the name of the tape. Ew. Which was really disgusting. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought it was just a leaked No, no, no. It, I think it was named Saved by the, by the Smell. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> who why is your phone blowing up right now uh i do not know and <laughs> whatever cool you're texting oh, in the my, middle of the my, show it's my it's my Shame. aunt it's my Shame. aunt aunt mary you if you're listening you <laughs> just text me while we're recording so you're a guest here <laughs> if la was a professional she'd put her phone on silent but whatever Funny enough, she's right now texting me about the show. Oh, that we're recording? Right <laughs> no, now. No, she texts me. She just listened to our Halloween episode, and she's like, hey, what happened to you? Your English was off. Off? Yes. I would my say English, today your English is off. My English apparently has been off for the past couple of weeks. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the flu. <laughs> but the flu affects to, your English. Back to, what's his name? Dustin Diamond. His name is Dustin Diamond. So hmm. he didn't That even has money. a porn name. He didn't have money, so he decided to do uh, porn to get back on the, on the circuit, on the Hollywood circuit. That bombed, but so bad. It, like, it just went the back. You know, there's this phrase, there's no such thing as bad media. Yes, there is. Dustin that, Diamond. That was... <laughs> that was Corey Feldman bad. So then he went to jail. I don't know what the hell happened, but he went to jail. And then he wrote the book, the famous book about... It was famous? The biography yeah. of Saved by the Bell. Well, yeah, I think Tolstoy. you're using the little term famous a little loosely when it comes to Screech's book. No, when I, the reason why I'm saying the famous book is because Lifetime did a movie based on it, and apparently everything he wrote was fake. He tried to make a lot of drama that didn't happen. And the reason why it became famous is because there were so many fake fake news in it that mm -hmm. all the actors, uh, Mark Paul, I always forget his last name, but Mark Paul, who plays Zack, Tiffany Thiessen, who plays, uh, what's her name? The girl. 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 All of them came out. Even Mario Lopez came out saying that it was bullshit, basically. <laughs> Pardon my French. It was a lot of lies that they do not remember. Mark Paul Gossamer is the one is one of the most famous that come out and he said, I do not understand why he's writing that because that's not what I remember from my 
time on Save by the Bell. I actually remember it as a fun, nice time amongst friends and not all this drama that apparently happened and I was not aware of. How do you spend so much time with the cast filming a show and then to just stab them in the back like that? Because he had no money and he wanted to... I yeah, but like even he... if he wrote a book about the good times, that would have sold too. Because that was again, a popular show. Again, I don't think this guy was very smart. I think that he thought that by making all of this things by saying all of this ugly things he was going to be able to stab them and he was jealous because let's be honest mario lopez has i mean it's all beautiful people and then him on that mario show. lopez <laughs> has become a little famous with not a little mario lopez has been he's famous on so you can, he's, on, of he's on e hollywood extra, news yeah extra uh mark paul gossamer he has done a bunch of shows none not with a lot of fame but he has been yeah, on tv nothing of note he, he, was in, uh, in, he, he, he had nine, was He had five minutes on Black Hawk Down. <laughs> oh, and at Mixtish. He's the dad on Mixtish, and he's doing a really great job mm-hmm. right now. And then Tiffany Thiessen has done really, really, really well. She was a 90210. The then she Baywatch. was in White Collar and Baywatch for a little time. And White Collars, if you guys haven't seen White Collars, you need to see White Collar. And then you have, what's her name? The Who Jessie character. Tease. The one that did the showgirls. Yeah, showgirls. Which, by the way, showgirls. showgirls, everybody everybody talks so bad about how could you leave Safe by the Bell to do showgirls. But and hey, then she did that, that and had no career right after. No career afterwards. She's now kicking up her career again. But even that, she has had more success in her life than mm-hmm. Dustin Diamond. So I think that he was just jealous that all of his... All of his peers went to have a better career than him. So he decided, you know what? I'm going to start talking crap about them. To I think that's what I'm going to start doing. Right after we're done recording, I'm going to write a book about lies about you. Okay. And then Thank put you. out my own sex tape. <laughs> and how are you going to uh-huh. call it? Oh. It, ha- it has to be something similar it's... like safe by the smell. It's going to be rich, but you say... The hot broccoli. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Right, ladies. I don't think I think you should uh-huh. take Rich out of it and just have the hot broccoli. The hot broccoli, right? <laughs> the That's smelly sexy. Bro- the smelly broccoli. That's disgusting. Come on. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. That's a turn off. <laughs> <laughs> because saved by the smell is such a turn off. <laughs> that was a bad name. That was a terrible name. We have just now spent a good eight minutes talking about Saved by the Bell (laughs) and mostly Screech. But that show, going back to the show, that show, I still watch it. It's on Hulu and I still put it on and watch it just to. My favorite favorite couple was Jesse and and Slater. So I always try to watch them. And it's coming back. It's having a sequel. They did a reunion show. And I don't think they invited Screech to it. They haven't done any reunion show. I thought there was a reunion show. No, Jimmy Kimmel. No, Jimmy Kimmel not. Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. that's right. Uh, the Fallon. Tonight Show Jimmy. That's Jimmy Fallon. Right. Jimmy Fallon did a reunion. Ep- not not episode, like a sketch. Sketch. And that's what of I'm thinking of. of I'm dumb. I'm sorry, Siri lovers. I'm dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for admitting it. Yeah, I'm dumb. <laughs> But, hey, Growing Pains, that's an 80s show, that's not a 90s show, but... Uh, that wasn't a TGIF show. I know that we're getting a little off with, uh, because there was, we can't, we got, there was Growing Pains and Family Ties and a couple other shows that were all kind of like the same five people family living yes. in, yeah, the dad's a doctor or an architect or something amazing, um... <laughs> And there's that that that's a whole different discussion though, those type of shows. I feel Can like. we talk about the fact that Leonardo DiCaprio came out of Growing Pains? Yeah, but so did Kirk Cameron and now he's got a super church. Um, I was gonna say Kirk Cameron just mm-hmm. shoot himself in the butt with his Christianity obsession. Mm-hmm. Well, mean, it's his, a mega church and now he makes more money than most of the actors that were on the show sis- put together. His sister never is a very christian woman and she has never 
gotten that obsessed with Jesus on TV, and she is still crazy popular. Uh, mm-hmm. Cameron, Cam- uh, no, Candace Cameron Bure, who plays DJ, who plays DJ on Full House. Oh, that's Kurt Cameron's sister. They are siblings. Totally forgot about that too. Yeah, not a lot of people knew that. Yeah. Huh. Huh. <laughs> Fun fact. <laughs> but, you know, again, going back to TGIF, it, it was such a nice, feel good. To me, it's a memory of my family after the week of work and school sitting in front of the TV for, we only got watched the first two, like the first hour and, of TGIF. And going back to one of our earlier questions, how come almost 30 years later, these shows still hold up and have such a big following. It's because the America has a need. We need it. Yes. We need something to make us feel good. We are stuck with so much crap getting pushed into our faces all the time. It's nice to just sit, relax, and feel good for 22 minutes. And that's why we need these shows. That's why they still hold up. I agree. I completely agree with you. And going back to what we said earlier, it's such a shame that they are not, like, none of the family sitcoms that are coming out right now are holding up like this one. I, they, I have a couple of quizzes that I always think are really cool. And I think we should do the what 90s sitcom are you according to BuzzFeed and which 90s sitcom Let's character do one. are you? Let's do one. Let's pick one. We don't need to do both. We're boring our audience right now. Okay, so let's <laughs> go with what 90s sitcom character are you? Okay. Okay. Describe your haircut. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with pigtails. Okay, so the first question is describe your haircut and we have spiky the famous Rachel haircut, pigtails, and flat top. Hmm. I am going to go with a Rachel. Okay. Your favorite food, crusty burger, a delectable tart, fruit snacks, and cheese. Crusty burger? Have you ever had a crusty burger? I like hamburgers more than anything else that's on here. <laughs> so, it's okay. a hamburger. Let's go with fruit snacks. You're most you're most known for your attitude, refined taste, adorableness, and I know you're gonna go with that one. And smarts. Yep, totally adorableness. I am effing adorable. Okay, I'm gonna go with refined taste. Since when? Everybody's always making fun of me of because I bought some pe- uh, Fendi puff balls. Anywho, Finn, your favorite place to hang out? Backyard tree house, coffee shop. Shop, sorry. Park across from house and basement laboratory. Coffee shop. Yeah, same. Your, Your personal, personal motto. motto. Don't have a cow, man. All you need are friends. You got it, dude. Did I do that? I'm going to go with did I do that. All you need are friends. How's your love life? Girls are gross. DOA. Boys, yuck. Hopelessly devoted. Oh, my God. No, Hopelessly I'm devoted. D- I'm going with DOA. <laughs> Pick a drink. A squishy, Ooh. red wine, milk, or personality change in serum. You see? Uh, it was a change in it, serum. It was booze. It's booze. Okay, Liquid I'm going to go with red wine. Me too. I am Crendel from Besties. I don't know I, who or I where am, this is from. I also got Crendel from Besties. Wow. Is that the <laughs> so only answer both? for this quiz? Wow. Sorry, Siri lovers. That was so anticlimactic. Nobody even knows who the fuck this is. Or what <laughs> show this is. But let me read this. <laughs> uh, apparently, both Rich and I are smart, sophisticated. We love our besties. <laughs> there were other TV shows with similar premises and characters that aired in the 90s. But you're from the most memorable one. Crendel was known for her sexy logs. But what's your sexiest quality? Who the hell is this? <laughs> Person. Yeah, where was one this show memorable <laughs> and smart and sophisticated? Come on, LA, we are none of that. <laughs> hey, I try to be sophisticated. <laughs> I don't know about you. Yeah, no, that is no <laughs> shot for this one. Bossy, stupid you quiz. You have failed us. You yes. have failed us. Sorry, Siri lovers. 
So, guys, we are once again on our favorite segment, everybody's favorite segment of the show. You keep the saying it's a favorite minute. segment. You keep saying it's our favorite segment. It's our only segment. Bum, bum, bum. Uh-huh. Yeah. Here's our segment of the show. Yeah. That could be, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Okay, right, you're Rich. going first this time. You're Me? going first. Yes, because I totally blew it last time going first, and I'm always first, and it's sexist, ladies first. <laughs> okay, wait a second. Let me see my notes and prepare. I prepare notes, ladies and gentlemen. You prepared I... notes for your convincing minute, where I'm just doing it off the top of my head. By the way, we keep saying convincing minute, but it's only 30 seconds. Yeah, so but it's... To co combined, it's a minute. It's supposed to be a minute for the Siri lovers, but it usually takes us 10 to 12 minutes to get through the segment. Okay. <laughs> okay, let me go back to my thing. <laughs> okay. So, Siri lovers, I'm going to try to convince you to watch The Politician from Netflix, which is a Ryan Murphy show. When, what his name? I love this guy, the Dear Evan Hansen, Ben Platt. Ben Platt, come on. Okay, so three, two, one. The Politician stars Ben Platt from Dear Evan Hansen. This, the first season is set in the fictional San Sebastian High School in Santa Barbara, California, where Ben Platt's character is trying to run for president. And he decides to take his um, friend who has cancer, but actually she has Munchausen by proxy as his v VP, so people think that he's a good character. His love life actually takes... Uh, kills himself in the first episode, but he's his spiritual guy through the whole show. Ooh. That was sad. I did not do a good job on this one. Yeah, I felt like you were reading it. It wasn't very passionate. Hey, I am going to punch you right now. <laughs> I am so glad we live an hour away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but and nonetheless, you guys, if you haven't seen it, I totally recommend it. I've been telling Rich... That I needed to watch it, and I saw it, and I your stop convincing it. part of this minute is over now. Oh, it's shut my up. turn. Shut up. Okay, so are you ready to yep. try to convince us to watch? Yes. What are you watch? What are you? Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, it is Daybreak on Netflix. Just came out like I think a week or two ago, and uh, I think uh, LA would like this because it's very eye zombie ish. Oh my god, we haven't uh -huh. said I saw this whole episode. I know. <laughs> okay, so three, two, one, go. Daybreak takes place after a nuclear explosion that takes out all of the adults and leaves all the teenage kids left to run the world. It is a very, all the adults have become sort of ghoulies, zombies ish characters, but the it takes place in these very uh, tr uh, clicky high school tropes and they all kind of collide together as tribes now in a very, very lighthearted, super over-the-top comic way. It is very colorful, very fun, and very survival. That was not bad. That was better than mine. I think that Daybreak won yeah, today. because I had passion. There was um, passion Siri in my lovers, heart. I'm going to put... We're going to put this... Yeah. <laughs> we're going to put this on... on uh, <laughs> On our Instagram and Twitter, uh, the poll. So, because today we do not have any guest starts to let us know who won. So, you guys yep. decide who won the convincing minute. And so you guys are listening. Have you gone and liked us on Facebook and Twitter right now? Like, go to or Instagram and Twitter right now? Yes, follow us on Instagram at Seriology underscore podcast so you can see our Halloween costume, especially Rich's oh. Halloween costume. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. What? I <laughs> as well as on Twitter, you guys, you should totally follow us at Seriology TV. And also, we are all over the place. So please, and we love your comments. So please leave us a comment and rate us on Apple, Stitcher, uh, Spotify, all of them, because it means a lot to us. And it's a way for you guys to help us keep growing and bringing you this A-listed quality Oh, yeah. Program Top that we tier. Do. <laughs> Top, Top tier. tier. <laughs> well, until then, tier lovers, we'll, we'll love see you, you next week. And it's going to be our family oriented November. So if you guys have any suggestions or Actually, what 90s I, TV show that you remember watching as a family. Because we're in November, Rich, 
we should end each of our episodes with one thing that we're thankful for in this year. Okay. For so, this year or just thankful for? Okay, so Rich, what are you thankful for on this episode? Sandwiches. I am thankful sandwiches exist. Why? I love sandwiches. You love sandwiches. Yeah. In that case, because we're do- apparently we're doing something with food. Mm-hmm. Um, I am thankful for, I was going to say candy corn, but lies. I am thankful for the Thanksgiving dinner. That food is freaking amazing. I'm sorry. We're not even near that yet. I, Give me a I, different thankful. I don't care. I'm thankful for that whole dinner, that cranberry sauce, turkey, stuffing, all of it. And especially the corn souffle. I am very thankful for that thing. All right. You're still three weeks out, so. <laughs> but, All right, Siri lovers. Again, let us know what you're thankful for. What food are you thankful for on uh, our Instagram or social media? And we might say it. Not we might. We will say it on our, our next episode. So love you a lot. And until then, city lovers. Have a good day, night, evening, whenever you're listening to this. Bye, everybody. Bye. Well, that's all for now, folks. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Seriology. Don't forget to give us a like on Twitter at Seriology TV. Send us a message about what shows you think should be on our bucket list, or if you just want to leave a comment about how awesome we are. See you next week, Siri lovers. And remember, wherever you are, you'll always be in our TV hearts.